Hyperlipidemia. Hyperlipidemia, hyperlipoproteinemia, or hyperlipidemia involves abnormally elevated levels of any or all lipids and all lipoproteins in the blood. It is the most common form of dyslipidemia. Lipids, fat soluble molecules, are transported in a protein capsule. The size of that capsule, or lipoprotein, determines its density. The lipoprotein density and type of apolipoproteins it contains determines the fate of the particle and its influence on metabolism. Hyperlipidemias are divided into primary and secondary subtypes. Primary hyperlipidemia is usually due to genetic causes, such as a mutation in a receptor protein, while secondary hyperlipidemia arises due to other underlying causes such as diabetes. Lipid and lipoprotein abnormalities are common in the general population, and are regarded as a modifiable risk factor for cardiovascular disease due to their influence on atherosclerosis. In addition, some forms may predispose to acute pancreatitis. Classification Hyperlipidemias may basically be classified as either familial, also called primary, caused by specific genetic abnormalities, or acquired, also called secondary, when resulting from another underlying disorder that leads to alterations in plasma lipid and lipoprotein metabolism. Also, hyperlipidemia may be idiopathic, that is, without known cause. Hyperlipidemias are also classified according to which types of lipids are elevated, that is hypercholesterolemia, hypertriglyceridemia or both in combined hyperlipidemia. Elevated levels of lipoprotein, A, may also be classified as a form of hyperlipidemia. Familial primary Familial hyperlipidemias are classified according to the Fredrickson classification which is based on the pattern of lipoproteins on electrophoresis or ultracentrifugation. It was later adopted by the World Health Organization, WHO. It does not directly account for HDL, and it does not distinguish among the different genes that may be partially responsible for some of these conditions. Hyperlipoproteinemia type I Type I hyperlipoproteinemia exists in several forms. Lipoprotein lipase deficiency, type IA, due to a deficiency of lipoprotein lipase, LPL, or altered apolipoprotein C2, resulting in elevated chylomicrons, the particles that transfer fatty acids from the digestive tract to the liver. Familial apoprotein CII deficiency, type IB a condition caused by a lack of lipoprotein lipase activator 533, chylomicranemia due to circulating inhibitor of lipoprotein lipase, type IC. Type I hyperlipoproteinemia usually presents in childhood with eruptive xanthomata and abdominal colic. Complications include retinal vein occlusion, acute pancreatitis, steatosis and organomegaly, and lipemia retinalis. Hyperlipoproteinemia type II Hyperlipoproteinemia type II, by far the most common form, is further classified into type IA and type IB, depending mainly on whether there is elevation in the triglyceride level in addition to LDL cholesterol. Type IA This may be sporadic, due to dietary factors, polygenic, or truly familial as a result of a mutation either in the LDL receptor gene on chromosome 19, 0.2% of the population, or the APOB gene, 0.2%. The familial form is characterized by tendon xanthoma, xane the asthma and premature cardiovascular disease. The incidence of this disease is about 1 in 500 for heterozygotes, and 1 in 1 million for homozygotes. HLPIIA is a rare genetic disorder characterized by increased levels of LDL cholesterol in the blood due to the lack of uptake, no APOB receptors, of LDL particles. This pathology however is the second most common disorder of the various hyperlipoproteinemias, with individuals with a heterozygotic predisposition of 1 in every 500 and individuals with homozygotic predisposition of 1 in every million. These individuals may present with a very unique set of physical characteristics such as, xane the lasmas, yellow deposits of fat underneath the skin often presenting in the nasal portion of the eye, 
tendon and tuberous xorned homers, arcus juvenilis, the graying of the eye often characterized in older individuals, arterial brutes, claudication, and of course atherosclerosis. Lab findings for these individuals are obvious and yet interesting in the fact that their serum cholesterol is two to three times greater than normal as well as increased LDL cholesterol but their triglycerides and VLDL values fall in the normal ranges. To manage persons with HLPIIA drastic measures may need to be taken especially if their HDL cholesterol is less than 30 mg per deciliter and their LDL cholesterol is greater than 160 mg per deciliter. A proper diet for these individuals requires a decrease in total fat to less than 30% of total calories with a ratio of them on, polysaturated fat of 111. Cholesterol should be reduced to less than 300 mg day thus the avoidance of animal products and to increase fiber intake to more than 20 g day with 6 g of soluble fiber day. Of course exercise should be promoted as exercise can increase HDL. The overall prognosis for these individuals is in the worst case scenario if uncontrolled and untreated individuals may die before the age of 20, however if one seeks a prudent diet with correct medical intervention the individual might see an increased incidence of xorntomas with each decade, Achilles tendonitis will occur, and accelerated atherosclerosis. Type Eb. The high VLDL levels are due to overproduction of substrates, including triglycerides, acetyl-CoA, and an increase in B100 synthesis. They may also be caused by the decreased clearance of LDL. Prevalence in the population is 10%. Familial combined hyperlipoproteinemia, FCH, lysosomal acid lipase deficiency, often called, cholesterol ester storage disease, secondary combined hyperlipoproteinemia, usually in the context of metabolic syndrome, for which it is a diagnostic criterion. Hyperlipoproteinemia type III This form is due to high shilomicrons and IDL, intermediate density lipoprotein. Also known as broad beta disease or dyspteliproteinemia, the most common cause for this form is the presence of APOEE2 E2 genotype. It is due to cholesterol rich VLDL, BVLDL. Its prevalence has been estimated to be approximately 1 in 10,000. It is associated with hypercholesterolemia, typically 8 to 12 mL, hypertriglyceridemia, typically 5 to 20 mL, a normal APOB concentration, and two types of skin signs, palmoxantometer or orange discoloration of skin creases, and tuber eruptive xantometer on the elbows and knees. It is characterized by the early onset of cardiovascular disease and peripheral vascular disease. Remnant hyperlipidemia occurs as a result of abnormal function of the APOE receptor, which is normally required for clearance of shilomicron remnants and IDL from the circulation. The receptor defect causes levels of shilomicron remnants and IDL to be higher than normal in the bloodstream. The receptor defect is an autosomal recessive mutation or polymorphism. Hyperlipoproteinemia type IV Familial hypertriglyceridemia is an autosomal dominant condition occurring in approximately 1% of the population. Hyperlipoproteinemia type V Hyperlipoproteinemia type V, also known as mixed hyperlipoproteinemia familial or mixed hyperlipidemia, is very similar to type I, but with high VLDL in addition to shilomicrons. It is also associated with glucose intolerance and hyperuricemia. In medicine, combined hyperlipidemia, or amia, also known as multiple type hyperlipoproteinemia is a commonly occurring form of hypercholesterolemia, elevated cholesterol levels, characterized by increased LDL and triglyceride concentrations, often accompanied by decreased HDL. 534 on lipoprotein electrophoresis a test now rarely performed, it shows as a hyperlipoproteinemia type IIB. It is the most common inherited lipid disorder, occurring in approximately 1 in 200 persons. In fact, almost 1 in 5 individuals who develop coronary heart disease before the age of 60 will have this disorder. The elevated triglyceride levels, greater than 5 mL, are generally due to an increase in VLDL, 
very low density lipoprotein, a class of lipoprotein that is prone to cause atherosclerosis. Types Familial combined hyperlipidemia, FCH, is the familial occurrence of this disorder, probably caused by decreased LDL receptor and increased APOB. Acquired combined hyperlipidemia is extremely common in patients who suffer from other diseases from the metabolic syndrome, syndrome X, incorporating diabetes mellitus type 2, hypertension, central obesity and CH. Excessive free fatty acid production by various tissues leads to increased VLDL synthesis by the liver. Initially, most VLDL is converted into LDL until this mechanism is saturated, after which VLDL levels elevate. Both conditions are treated with fibrate drugs, which act on the pyrex and proliferator activated receptors, PPARs, specifically PPARA, to decrease free fatty acid production. Statin drugs especially the synthetic statins, latorvastatin and rosuvastatin, can decrease LDL levels by increasing hepatic reuptake of LDL due to increased LDL receptor expression. Unclassified familial forms Non-classified forms are extremely rare. Hyperalpha lipoproteinemia, polygenic hypercholesterolemia. Acquired secondary Acquired hyperlipidemias, also called secondary dyslipoproteinemias, often mimic primary forms of hyperlipidemia and can have similar consequences. They may result in increased risk of premature atherosclerosis or, when associated with marked hypertriglyceridemia, may lead to pancreatitis and other complications of the chylomicranemia syndrome. The most common causes of acquired hyperlipidemia are diabetes mellitus. Use of drugs such as diuretics, beta blockers, and estrogens. Other conditions leading to acquired hyperlipidemia include hyperthyroidism, renal failure, nephrotic syndrome, alcohol usage, some rare endocrine disorders and metabolic disorders. Treatment of the underlying condition, when possible, or discontinuation of the offending drugs usually leads to an improvement in the hyperlipidemia. Specific lipid lowering therapy may be required in certain circumstances. Another acquired cause of hyperlipidemia, although not always included in this category, is postprandial hyperlipidemia, a normal increase following ingestion of food. Management For treatment of type 2, dietary modification is the initial approach, but many patients require treatment with statins. HMG-CoA reductase inhibitors, to reduce cardiovascular risk. If the triglyceride level is markedly raised, fibrates may be preferable due to their beneficial effects. Combination treatment of statins and fibrates, while highly effective, causes a markedly increased risk of myopathy and rhabdomyolysis and is therefore only done under close supervision. Other agents commonly added to statins are azetamibe, nicine and bile acid sequestrants. Dietary supplementation with fish oil is also used to reduce elevated triglycerides, with the greatest effect occurring in patients with the greatest severity. There is some evidence for benefit of plant sterol containing products and O3 fatty acids. For the other types see the treatment column in the Fredrickson classification table above. Patient empowerment In 2013 LPLD Connect launched for people with hyperlipoproteinemia type 1, chylomicranemia syndrome, lipoprotein lipase deficiency to share their identified information and learn from others LPLD-CONNECT.